So Trey, the first story we're going to talk about is that the office has now officially moved to the Peacock Network. So in the streaming wars, there is no end to the number of options being offered viewers. NBC launched the Peacock Network um, back in April of 15th, 2020. For me, it barely registered on my radar, but they currently have 26 million subscribers. Um, their content library, in my opinion, isn't as strong as their rivals, but they have an ace in the hole now because they've got the office moving to the network. Um, those two seasons are gonna offer for free, seasons one and two, and everything after that, seasons three and nine are gonna be behind a paywall. And they offer three tiers of membership. So you've got free, um, you've got $4.99 a month with ads, and then $9.99 a month with ads, which feels pretty steep to me. In addition to the office, they've got things like Saved by the Bell, which is a, another original content um, that they put out there, and then a library of NBC titles like 30 Rock. So I've got a couple questions for you. So first, Trey, does losing the office hurt Netflix? Because it's regularly their number one most watched acquired, meaning non-original content show. So is Netflix going to hurt because of this move? So I would say no. Um, I think it'll hurt their viewership a little bit, but I don't think people are going to cancel. Um, from just what I hear, I would say The Office and Friends are probably the two most streamed um, pieces of content, uh, which I guess Friends is now with HBO Max, um, I believe if I, if I heard that correctly, uh, which, which, which is also interesting to me because everybody that's watching them again has already seen all of, I, I would assume, has already yep. seen all of them. So I struggle with consuming the new content from a time standpoint. So as much as I like watching things hundreds of times, if a movie's on that I really like, if the Karate Kid's on, I'm gonna watch it. Uh, if Inception is on, I'm gonna watch it, it doesn't matter. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I, I find that interesting that people will just continue to watch those, but I guess they're just comfortable with those shows. Uh, next, Netflix has so much original content um, they're continuing to pump out new content. And then they obviously have the things that, 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 uh, the ongoing series that they've already had. So, um, I would say it from the standpoint of will it hurt Netflix from a dollar standpoint, I wouldn't think so. I think it helps NBC and Peacock. Um, and then I heard Netflix has a price hike coming up either at some point this year, uh, I believe so. And, and I'm assuming that has to, to do with, with paying for more original content, but, um, <clears throat> going back to Netflix a little bit, they were, they recognized very early that establishing original content was important. And I think they originally realized that a couple, well, back to probably House of Cards a little bit before that, um, <clears throat> when they said, okay, well, we have these streaming deals, but other, other, other companies are gonna start getting their streaming services up and running. So how do we make sure that we don't have to worry about losing our subscribers because shows are going away? Well, it's original content, right? You have to own the content. So yeah, what, I what, think, are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I think it's going to help Peacock more than it's going to hurt Netflix. To your point, I think where Netflix's strategy has really been to have a diversified portfolio of shows. I think, in my opinion, the two streaming services that have done that the most would be Hulu and Netflix. I think Netflix has done a great job, obviously, um, with original content. I agree with you as well on, on that front. Um, and so I think it's a much bigger deal for Peacock to pull it back because they need some kind of anchor that's going to draw people to their streaming service. Netflix doesn't need it. I think it's going to disappoint people. I agree with you too. It's difficult for me to watch the same show that I've already seen over and over for whatever reason, for shows like friends and the office, it's a mix of people that want to continue to watch it again and again. And then also finding new audiences that streaming is getting to that weren't really alive or watching TV um, when those shows were airing. Right. True. So, so this, this takes me to the next question, which is, is Peacock worth it? You know, is it worth 10 bucks a month, even five bucks a month um, with ads? I know that you're a huge Saved by the Bell fan. Um, you know, maybe that alone for you was enough to get you to invest in another streaming service. But, you know, from, from what you know of their library with the office moving over with Saved by the Bell, um, are you gonna be a subscriber to Peacock? So I won't, and, and my reasoning is really weird because I don't, I, five bucks a month is fine. I think that's more than reasonable and depending on, you know, the content that they have and what you want to watch. I'd like to watch the Saved by the Bell reboot. I'm assuming at some point there will be another way to watch it. Um, but, but we're coming up on this, on this issue where everybody has all these streaming services and all these different paid services. I don't want to get it and then forget I have it. And then it's just $5. Yeah. I mean, again, $5 isn't going to make or break most people. 
But I just now maybe the maybe for me it's I get it for a month and I stream say by the bell reboot and the other things that I want to stream and then I cut it off. But I don't know. That just seem that just seems like a lot of work. But when I think about Netflix, I think about there there's always new content on there. There's things that I want to watch and and the rest of the family. That's kind of the go to. Hey, we need to find something else to watch. Let's go. Let's go to Netflix because they have that mix of original programming and yeah. that backlog, so you can just go to a certain category and then watch it. So um, for me, no. But for somebody that likes The Office and Thirty Rock, uh, which I think is great, and wants to consume some of those, some of those other shows, five bucks is pretty cheap. I don't mind ads either. To me, an ad gives you time to get up and get a drink, uh, check your phone, whatever. So. I actually don't mind the the ads, so I would, if I were to do it, it would be the five dollar a month. Tier. Yeah, I'm not going to be a subscriber either. Uh, mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see if over time they create some more original content. Maybe like Saved by the Bell never is available on anything other than their streaming service, and I think that's that's really how you draw people. It goes back to, really to that original content. There's very few what's called acquired shows, shows that have you know were already out running that you know a streaming service acquires that draw people. Obviously, the office and friends are, are two of them. The other thing this brings up, Trey, is the, the model that Peacock uses. So you're obviously you're fascinated by, you know, the, the, the models that all these different services are trying to use to monetize, whether it be bringing, you know, Hollywood movies direct to streaming, new shows, new streaming services. Peacock does it really interesting. So you got with Netflix, which is you have one option. You can be a subscriber or not. There's no option really for, you know, ad supported. It's all non ads. Um, obviously, I think that the only difference in subscription would be the number of streams that you can support at any one time. But that's really it, right? So that those are your options. Uh, Peacock really offers three, if you will. So there is a free version um, that allows you some a- access to some content with ads. Then you can pay that $5 and have ads or pay the full $9.99 and have no ads. So it's, it's a little bit of a hybrid approach. So I'm really curious, do you agree that this, is that the right approach to take, especially knowing you don't, you're not as bothered by ads? I know for me, I don't mind these streaming services having an alternative source of revenue through some of the ads. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to help them diversify their revenue streams and allow them to have a little bit more longevity. What are your thoughts? I think options are always good. So to have an option, hey, I don't want to pay 10 bucks. I only want to pay five, half of that and put up with some of the ads. I think I, I, I think that's good. And I think five dollars, that's almost a write off. When you get yep. into not when you get into ten and twelve, it's like, okay, well, how many ten and twelve dollar subscriptions do I have per month? Then that really starts to add up. But five bucks, it's like, okay, if anybody to me for five dollars a month, if anybody is gonna consume it at all on an ongoing basis, then that's that's uh, that's probably worth it. So I might be talking to myself into signing up for it at that point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's switch gears. Um, YouTube gaming. 